Hi, my name is Rob Wexler and I'm a postdoc with Professor Emily Carter at Princeton University. But this talk deals with work I completed with my PhD advisor, Professor Andrew Rapp at the University of Pennsylvania, and that was funded by the Office of Naval Research. In this talk, I'll describe an interatomic potential that we developed that is capable of accurately and efficiently simulating solid solutions of ferroelectric perovskite oxides with hundreds of thousands to millions of atoms. Since this talk deals with ferroelectric solid solutions, I'll first introduce the concept of ferroelectricity and why it might matter to chemical engineers. Ferroelectricity is defined as the property of some materials to have a spontaneous polarization that's reversible upon the application of an external electric field. The figure on the left shows the characteristic hysteresis loop of a ferroelectric with the strength and direction of the electric field on the x-axis and the polarization on the y-axis. Here I'll show the effect of the electric field on the displacements of titanium B-site cations in barium titanate, or BTO. Upon the application of an electric field, the titanium B-site cations in BTO polarize, for example along the 111 axis, and eventually reach a saturating polarization, P sub s. Upon decreasing the strength of the electric field to zero, the polarization decreases, not to zero, but to the remnant polarization, P sub r. Upon field reversal, the polarization continues to decrease until we reach the coercive field, E sub C, where the polarization flips, and now the titanium B-site cations are displaced along the opposite direction. In this case, I've shown the titanium B-site cations polarized along the minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 direction. But why might this matter to a chemical engineer? Well, there's probably many reasons. Recently, there's been a resurgence of interest in ferroelectric catalysis, where the change in surface charge associated with up and down polarization of a ferroelectric is used to drive chemical reactions like NOx decomposition and CO oxidation. This has become a hot topic of late with over 200 publications in the last three years, but there remains a need to understand and develop strategies for tuning the catalytically relevant ferroelectric properties like P sub s, which determines the amount of surface charge, and E sub c, which determines how easy it is to flip the polarization, an intrinsically nanoscale process. And while my ultimate goal in this area is to develop molecular dynamic simulation techniques that can be used to model the nanoscale complexities of both ferroelectric surfaces and their catalytic properties, our goal in this project was to develop an interatomic potential that could reproduce the measured properties of a well-known but incompletely understood lead-free relaxer ferroelectric, barium strontium titanate, or BST. The difference between a ferroelectric and a relaxer is that the latter doesn't have a sharp temperature-driven ferroelectric to paraelectric phase transition. The prevailing microscopic theory for relaxers at the moment is that they consist of ferroelectric domains, but that the domains vary in size and the speed of their dynamics, much like slush, which contains both water and ice-like regions. This leads to nanoscale correlations in the ferroelectric polarization, which further leads to strong enhancements of the dielectric constant. But BST is unique in that BTO is a ferroelectric and STO is paraelectric, but when you mix the two, you get relaxer-like behavior at certain compositions. In other words, this means you can tune the ferroelectric properties of BTO via strontium substitution on the A site. For example, by varying the amount of strontium cations on the A site, you can control the temperature of the maximum dielectric constant, T sub max, which is the temperature at which ferroelectric properties are lost and above which relaxer properties start to wane, and the magnitude of the dielectric constant, which to some extent describes the ease with which surfaces can be charged. To develop our interatomic potential for BST, we use the bond valence model of I.D. Brown, which has been used successfully in the past by the RAP group to explain the nucleation of ferroelectric domains, the temperature dependence of their mobility, and the atomic scale mechanism of relaxer behavior. To explain how the bond valence model works, I'll use as an example the TiO6 octahedron present in BST, where I've labeled the instantaneous value of the TiO bond length as R sub TiO. The so-called valence of this TiO bond, V sub TiO, can, can be expressed mathematically as some TiO bond length parameter, R sub naught TiO, divided by the instantaneous TiO bond length raised to some parameter, C sub TiO, which determines how sharply the TiO bond valence decreases with increases in the instantaneous bond length. You can see this graphically here on the right, where the TiO bond valence for an arbitrary instantaneous bond length is the blue curve. When the bond length is equal to the bond length parameter, the TiO bond valence is exactly equal to 1. However, in the case of BTO, the TiO bond length is approximately 2 angstroms, which gives a bond valence of 0.6 for the TiO bond in BTO. But what does this all mean? 
An even more intuitive metric than the bond valence is the bond valence sum for a particular cation, which corresponds to the valence of the neutral atom. So for titanium, whether we're looking at titanium dioxide or BTO, the sum of the TiO bond valences for a particular titanium cation should be approximately equal to four because the neutral titanium atom has four valence electrons. If we sum the TiO bond valences for the TiO6 octahedron in BTO, where the TiO bond lengths are equal to two angstroms, then the bond valence sum for the titanium cation is 3.6, which is pretty close to four. In this case, the value of 3.6 for the titanium bond valence indicates that the instantaneous TiO bond length is too long. Therefore, the bond valence sum quantifies the extent to which a cation is under or over bonded. But what about the case in ferroelectric BTO, where the titanium cation in the TiO6 octahedron is polarized, as shown on the right? What if both the nonpolar and polar case give the same TiO bond valence sum? How can we differentiate between these symmetrically distinct polyhedra, which is especially important in ferroelectrics, which are stabilized by this type of symmetry breaking? This can be addressed using the concept of the bond valence vector, developed by my fellow grad student in the RAP group and now professor at Westlake University, Shi Liu. In this formalism, again for the example of the TiO6 octahedron, we can define the vector pointing from the central titanium cation to one of the six oxygen anions, which I'll denote vector R sub TiO. And while the bond valence depends only on the magnitude of the TiO bond vector, the bond valence vector, or vector W sub TiO, depends on both the magnitude of the TiO bond vector through its dependence on the TiO bond valence and its direction. And just like the individual bond valences, we can sum the bond valence vectors. For the nonpolar TiO6 octahedron, it's clear that the TiO bond valence vector sum should be zero, regardless of the value of the bond valences. For the polar case, however, the sum of the TiO bond valence vectors is non-zero, thus providing a means to differentiate between paraelectric and ferroelectric BTO. Using these concepts, we cast them into a mathematical form, which yields the following potential energy function. The total potential energy is the sum of the Coulomb interaction between ions, E sub C, the short-range Pauli repulsion between atoms, E sub R, the bond valence and bond valence vector energy penalties, E sub BV and E sub BVV, which I'll describe in a moment, and a harmonic angle potential, E sub A, that penalizes octahedral rotation. The bond valence penalty function is the sum of the square deviations of the instantaneous valence of the ith cation from its ideal valence. For example, remember that the titanium valence in BTO is 3.6, but should be 4, multiplied by a penalty scaling factor that depends on the cation. In other words, S sub i is different for barium, strontium, and titanium. The only difference between the bond valence and the bond valence vector energy penalties is that we first take the magnitude of the bond valence vectors before calculating their deviations from ideality, vector W sub naught i, which is a fitted value. After parameterizing this model, which gives less than 2 MeV per atom deviations from DFT energy differences, we performed molecular dynamic simulations using the LAMPS package and calculated the time averaged equilibrium properties of BST with 10, 30, 50, 70, and 90 percent strontium substitution on the A site. The plot on the left shows the polarization direction as a function of the temperature. Note that due to DFT errors, the phase transition temperatures I'll report here are severely underestimated. However, the qualitative trends are in excellent agreement with the experiment. Nonetheless, I'll begin by discussing the temperature dependence of the polarization in 10 percent BST. At low temperatures, it's in the rhombohedral crystal structure, denoted R, which has the titanium cation polarized along the x, y, and z axes. At 100 K, however, the x component of the polarization, P sub x, is lost, leaving BST in the orthorhombic crystal structure, denoted O, with titanium polarized only along y and z. At 110 Kelvin, the y component of the polarization, P sub y, becomes zero, and BST adopts the tetragonal crystal structure, denoted T where the titanium cation is displaced from the center of the TiO6 octahedron only along the z-axis. Finally, at 140 Kelvin, BST undergoes a phase transition from the ferroelectric tetragonal phase to the paraelectric cubic phase, denoted C. This is the Curie temperature, T sub C. As the strontium content is increased from 10 to 90 percent, the Curie temperature decreases quasi-linearly. And this makes sense because at higher strontium concentrations, the crystal behaves more like STO, which is paraelectric and therefore doesn't have a ferroelectric paraelectric phase transition or Curie temperature. In this way, strontium substitution enables the tuning of the temperature at which ferroelectric properties are lost. 
Additionally, at the high strontium contents, 70 and 90 percent, there are no longer regions of temperature where the orthorhombic and tetragonal phases are stable, which not only agrees with experiments, but also highlights that phase stability can also be tuned via compositional control. To show the power of our method, I'll now discuss the atomistic implications of strontium substitution on the local displacements of the titanium cations, whose some displacements generate the polarization of the ferroelectric phases of 10% BST. A model simulation cell for BST is shown on the left, where barium and strontium are shown in green and are randomly distributed on the A site. Titanium is blue and oxygen is red. The central plot shows the distribution of the magnitude of the titanium displacement with zero displacement at the bottom left, as a function of the temperature, shown as the y-axis on the right side of the plot. The color here indicates the temperature going from zero Kelvin, which is blue for colder, to 170 Kelvin, which is red for hotter. Marking the Curie temperatures here, it's clear that the instantaneous titanium dipoles remain non-zero, even in the paraelectric phase, which suggests that the 10% BST ferroelectric to paraelectric phase transition has order disorder character. In other words, the titanium cations are never at zero displacement. They just visit all possible displacement directions, leading to a net zero average displacement. The plot on the right shows the temperature dependence of the distribution of the direction and magnitude of the titanium displacement components. The X, Y, and Z components are blue, yellow, and red, respectively. For the lower temperature rhombohedral and higher temperature cubic phases, where the three components are equal, the distribution acquires a purple color. For the tetragonal phase, where the Y and Z components are equal, as we've defined here, the distribution is orange. This plot tells a different story above the Curie temperature, that the titanium cation quasi-uniformly samples slightly positive, slightly negative, and zero displacements. This implies that the ferroelectric paraelectric phase transition in BST also has displacive character. In other words, that the local polarization magnitude decreases to approximately zero at the Curie temperature. Therefore, it's clear that BST cannot be categorized as either having an order disorder or displacive phase transition, thus infusing new intrigue into this long-studied material. And as a final demonstration of what our potential can do, we'll also take a closer look here at this shoulder peak that exists at slightly higher titanium displacements in the rhombohedral phase of 10% BST. To determine the source of this peak at higher titanium displacements, we analyze these trajectories by calculating the distribution of single cell polarizations, the polarization of one titanium cation in its O6 octahedron, as a function of the number of strontium cations, N sub SR, sitting on the eight closest A sites. For zero, all eight A sites are occupied by barium, which is green here. Whereas for N sub SR equals four, four of the eight A sites are now occupied by magenta colored strontium, of which there are a few configurations. As the number of strontium neighbors is increased, so does the single cell polarization, which implies that strontium enhances the polarization of titanium, which is counterintuitive because as we know, STO is paraelectric. Additionally, we find that the distributions for N sub SR greater than or equal to one have more than one peak. So perhaps the configuration of strontium relative to the titanium polarization is also important. For this, we focus on the cases where there's only one strontium neighbor and see that there is a low, middle, and high peak. The high peak actually corresponds to cases where the titanium polarization vector points towards the A site containing strontium. And considering the fact that the ionic radius of strontium is smaller than that of barium, we hypothesize that low concentration strontium doping enhances the titanium polarization because its smaller ionic radius creates extra room for titanium to displace. This side peak is then lost at higher strontium concentrations, which I haven't shown here but you can find in the paper cited on the bottom left because the lattice constants start to contract as the crystal becomes more like STO. So in summary, our interatomic potential provides deep atomistic and nanoscale insights into the equilibrium and dynamical properties of ferroelectric oxides, and can be used to model disordered systems like solid solutions, where composition is a knob for tuning ferroelectric properties that are key to their performance and applications. Our potential, however, is not limited by the ordering of barium and strontium, and therefore we've begun looking at the properties of BST superlattices in collaboration with the experimental research group of Lane Martin at UC Berkeley. And while our work still seems a far way off from modeling ferroelectric catalysis, we've provided a promising framework for modeling an important, tunable, and environmentally friendly ferroelectric that can now be augmented to design next generation catalysts. To conclude, I'd just like to thank my PhD advisor, Professor Andrew Rapp, who gave me the opportunity to work on a wide range of topics in chemistry, ranging from catalysis to ferroelectrics. 
I'd also like to thank Yubo Chi, with whom I collaborated on the project, and mention once again that our project was supported computationally by the HPCMP and financially by ONR. And last but not least, I'd just like to thank you all for listening. I'll leave the slide open with some additional info. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or just want to chat more.